Hi guys, so the fragrance we're talking about today is an absolutely amazing one. Uh, it's Lalique's Pour Ohm, the Lion version. And I've had the Akus Horse version for a while and I'm not, um, I can't believe that it took me this long to get around to this one. Um, the only reason I hesitated, by the way, is because I thought, uh, based on the descriptions and, and how, um, you know, the, the scent profile, I thought that this would smell like an old man, an old gentleman. Um, and so that's the reason I straight, had strayed away from it. But uh, actually, this to me, I think I'm going to call it a masterpiece. This is so well done. Uh, it's a complex fragrance by Maurice Roussel. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that this is actually maybe my favorite Lalique fragrance. Um, I've tried most of their fragrances. Uh, and I think this is my favorite and you know if you're worried that this is gonna have too much of a barbershop feel and an, and an old-school feel I actually don't think so and man it's its own thing um, so I know that this gets uh, compared to Creed's Bois de Portugal uh, and I've not tried that fragrance so I can't tell you about that comparison but I'll tell you this reminded me immediately of two different scents uh, the first is, you know, and it was a very, very sort of quick uh, association that I had. The first is Green Irish Tweed, um, of course, also from Creed, but, you know, may I, you know, I can't tell you if it's closer to Bois de Portugal, perhaps it is, but for me, you know, the experience was very, very close to uh, what you get in Green Irish Tweed, and specifically, and I still feel that way, yeah, um, specifically in the first few seconds, uh, just in the opening, the Lalique Porom Lion opens up with a lot of bitterness and a lot of uh, a leafy greenness. And um, if you like that about Green Irish Tweed, if you've tried it or own it, then I think you'll love this fragrance. Um, there is a twist in Lalique Porom, uh, but at least in the opening, you're, it's a similar sort of you know family of fragrances so um you know i think the simple way to put it is it's if you think that green irish tweed smells like an old man and you don't like it for that reason then you probably won't like lalik porom but if you like this type of fragrance i think this lalik porom is right up your alley and it's uh, a different version of uh, kind of a similar type of scent and the other fragrance that uh lalik porom reminded me of um is Platinum Egoist by Chanel. Uh, this one is obvious. So, uh, you know, not only I think is the release date sort of similar, but it has a very similar um, kind of composition. A lot of herbal tones in both these fragrances. Uh, a very nice sandalwood that gives both these fragrances a lot of creaminess. So the kind of, I know a lot of people describe this as metallic, but I think what makes Platinum Egoi so special is this kind of creamy sandalwood underlying, um, you know, the, the sharp, sharper herbal notes. Uh, and of course, specifically rosemary is in both of these scents. So if you like this, um, I think in a way this smells, uh, Egoi smells a little bit more mature, a little bit more uh, of a soapy, sort of barbershop scent whereas this I get a lot of oriental vibes actually I know I think this is probably classified as a woody aromatic but I get a lot of uh, oriental vibes because uh, this has the major difference is that you know while it has a similar herbal quality uh, and like I said in the opening a little more bitterness here uh, there is a lot more amped up sweetness in, in Lalique Prom Lion and that's the surprise of this fragrance. That's the real magic. Um, it, it mixes in these sort of very green notes, very woody notes uh, with uh, this sweetness, this vanillic sweetness. Uh, and I know something like Guerlain's Abbey Rouge uh, gets talked about as really the first oriental for fragrance for men. Um, I think that this sort of is like, uh, a new first, um, if you will, um, in a way, yeah, I mean, it, for, for me, it smells kind of, um, it has a similar effect in that has that um, citrusy opening uh, and then turns into a, a more creamy powdery vanilla. 
uh, while retaining this uh, leafy, leafy smell, a uh, leafy aspect similar to green Irish tweed. And what I like really about this is that it's not overly uh, citrusy actually. <clears throat> so a lot of old school fragrances have this very common and classic style where you know it has a very tart uh, but nice you know natural smelling citrus but also a very stuffy soapy uh, kind of smell and this doesn't do that because it has an airy woodiness uh, about it. It's a, it is a woody fragrance. Uh, the sandalwood of course providing airiness but I realized later the reason that this smells so similar to green Irish tweed for me is a similar use of iris. Um, so this actually contains iris too. So you get this kind of um, buttery, this, you know, a little, kind of almost aquatic freshness that, that you get in green Irish tweed. Um, you know, of course, when I say aquatic, I'm not referring to those modern blue uh, fragrances. It's, it's, a, it's a floral sort of uh, clean floral sort of smell that you get from iris. Um, uh, thickened up a little bit because of the sandalwood and the nutty, kind of a, a nuttier smell. Um, but you get that and that's what's so good about this. And again, if you like green Irish tweed, you like this fragrance. Yeah, so as I said, uh, this fragrance is not, uh, it is complex and it's not linear. Um, transformation kind of happens very quickly so you do get uh, more of a bright opening and then very quickly you start to get a lot of that sweetness like I said um, the vanilla coming through and this fragrance in the next stage kind of has a, a powdery takes a powdery turn um, so if you don't like creamy powdery fragrances I think um, this might sort of, um, you might not like this and that's the part that might surprise you. It's not just a sharp, fresh citrus blast. Um, actually, it's a kind of a creamy scent and slight, and again, slightly bitter. Now, uh, in the kind of heart, uh, in the middle stages, I think the main um, player is the herbal aspect. Um, so at times I'm reminded of, or I, I you know, I think about uh, sort of the image of walking onto a lavender field, uh, this kind of prairie-like openness, uh, very airy, very, you know, idyllic, right? So that's kind of the feel I get uh, in the middle stages, a kind of a garden freshness, right? So that's where I would classify this scent. There's the, the uh, while being woody, while being um, kind of oriental, like I said, it also is green, uh, you know, in that way, it, uh, sort of like a garden vegetal sort of greenness. And that's how I, I uh, have previously described green Irish tweed too, this kind of vegetal aspect. And this has a similar thing going on, beautiful. The one other thing um, that's really, really surprising and magnificent about this scent, um, I'm not sure if I sort of get this now, but on previous wearings, uh, you know, I realized why this is so pleasant uh, is because it reminds me of one particular very, very hype fragrance, niche fragrance, Amouage's Reflection Man. Um, and I've never heard anybody sort of make that comparison, um, but I think that if you, you might find that if you come back to this fragrance and then, and then smell Reflection Man, you, you'll see what I mean. Um, because Reflection Man, uh, Again, especially when both fragrances dry down, you have essentially a similar effect of sort of uh, uh, kind of floral, right? Um, you know, there, there's a, a good dose of uh, floral notes in here too, in the heart, iris, jasmine. So you get a floral heart uh, with a creamy sweetness and that's uh, what Reflection Man does. I would say the difference is uh, Reflection Man, um, and I have a, a decant uh, in the back, but you know, um, I'm not going to compare it right now, but Reflection Man from my uh, memory is a little bit spicier, like like more peppery. Uh, and so, it, you know, it can feel a bit cleaner, a little bit more modern. But I realized that, you know, after smelling this, that Reflection Man wasn't uh, like a completely revolutionary scent. 
um, there was already something that that smelled like it, like this. Uh, and man, so you basically the way I'm describing this scent is <clears throat> a little bit of green Irish tweed, you know, with the iris and this uh, vegetal kind of smell, bitterness, a little bit of uh, uh, platinum ego yeast, herbal, uh, masculine, slightly you know barbershop. And then a uh, creamy sweetness similar to Amouage's Reflection Man, right? So you're getting all those aspects uh, and that's what makes this fragrance so good, right? Uh, what are we really missing there? Um, it is a little bit more of a, a mature scent. I mean, all those fragrances that I mentioned are sort of people who like uh, to smell a little bit more like a gentleman, like a more mature um, type of smell, um, but it doesn't smell old to me. And, you know, this is one of those scents that I would gladly pay, uh, you know, a fair price for um, a lot, a lot more than what it goes for, and it's just mind-blowingly cheap. Uh, you know, of obviously the retail on this size is probably like 125 or 130. Um, that's generally what the La Ligue fragrances go for. But you know, it's it's just we're lucky that we have these discounters that specifically for La Ligue. I mean, they're so heavily discounted. This one for thirty dollars for you know this 125 ml is uh you know ridiculous you know i think it's criminally low the price uh and this is a must-have pickup for um you know any enthusiast especially if you like uh mature scents i think this could be sort of uh, like your signature scent similar to green irish tweed so guys here it is lalique Perom lion man this is good okay so if you've not tried it um, I was very late to try it, you know, definitely give it a try. Um, well worth the hype, even though not hyped enough actually compared to, you know, things like Ancre Noir, right? Um, or a lot of, just a lot of uh, what we call cheapies. You know, this should be right up there. This is, uh, the quality is there. Um, and just a masterful creation by Maurice Roussel. All right, um, there you go guys. So I'll see you in the next review, bye.